Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar. In the last series of six videos, we discussed several topics interrelated with each other. Dr. Mohite first discussed about palpitation and he said it is due to increased stroke volume with heart racing, feeling in the chest, at times also in the neck or the throat. And this often occurs at the end of severe exercise transiently but may also occur at rest especially due to any anxiety or stress. But we should not forget even a heart problems can cause palpitation and the clues are an excessively fast rate or a palpitation lasting for a long time or a frequent episodes of palpitation often accompanied with chest pain, sometimes a lightheadedness, dizziness or even sometimes a sudden falling down. Well, these are the clues to evaluate the heart defect underlying a such a episode of palpitation. And this led to the next episode uh, which Dr. Palniraman discussed about a syncope, a fainting attack. He said it is due to a transient loss of consciousness and the loss of postural tone as a result of cerebral hypoperfusion and the most common cause is a vasovagal attack which has a characteristic of not only a sudden onset but also a very sudden quick complete recovery. This often happens due to an starvation, due to severe dehydration or a severe anemia and I think these are not uncommon in a school-going child who rushes in the morning on an empty stomach, stands in the assembly and then suddenly falls down. This does not need any further evaluation, but it could also be to heart defects and one must not forget how to pick up such a fainting episodes and it could be especially due to a silent problem like a long QT interval and the clue is if it happens during exercise and that is important not to miss. But at times a sudden fainting episode could also be due to a seizure disorder and in the next episode Dr. Moite came again and discussed what is seizure and the seizure is due to imbalance between excitatory and inhibitory electrical circuits due to ionic imbalance and he said that they could be generalized motor seizures often referred to as convulsions but it could be also a generalized non-motor seizure due to affection of areas of the cortex other than the motor cortex. And of course it could be focal where you don't lose consciousness but there is another type of a focal seizure with an impaired awareness and that could march into a generalized seizure with unconsciousness. And I think this is important because we must take a detailed history of a precedent episodes and actually what happened during the episode of seizure and also post seizure events. Otherwise we miss a focal seizure marching into a generalized seizure. He also made a strong clarity that seizure could be an acute symptomatic seizure due to an acute recent illness as happens in a simple febrile convulsion seen between the ages of 6 months and 5 years benign and of course due to intracranial infection, metabolic disorders and intracranial hemorrhage are other causes of acute symptomatic seizure. But the seizure could be a remote symptomatic seizure which means it could occur weeks, months or even years after the damage that occurred to the brain and this is typically uh, seen in a brain damaged patient. And of course it could be idiopathic but never diagnose idiopathic seizure uh, below 5 years of age. And then he also made a strong plea that most of the generalized seizures stop within 3 to 5 minutes but if not we must use the proper drug to abort an attack because if a general seizure lasts for about 20 minutes or more, it's likely to cause a subtle brain damage. But sometimes a seizure is going to be mimicked by many other episodes like a vertigo, breath holding spasm and even an abnormal movement. 
and therefore in the next episode dr maniar discuss about abnormal movement and he first emphasized that we must rule out a seizure and then of course he said abnormal movements could be physiological which means they occur even in normal population and he gave an example of a jittery infant or a startled reflex seen in the first 6 to 8 weeks of life but not thereafter and then he also discuss about tics which are so common even at any age in the population they can be easily suppressed but there are other abnormal movements hypokinetic as happens in parkinsonism but more often hyperkinetic like tremors chorea dystonia myoclonic spasm so on and so forth they are all caused by the basal ganglia involvement and these structures are so close to each other that at time there could be a mixed type of an abnormal movement and he said that abnormal movement could be a stand alone symptom as happens in rheumatic chorea or tremors and of course it could be a combined mixed type of a disorder due to a uh, extensive brain damage including basal ganglia and then he mentioned that even abnormal movements could occur from a primary non neurological disorder like hyperthyroidism and a chronic liver failure with flapping tremors but many times with these conditions that we discussed so far there is also an abnormal behavior and dr kare in the next episode discuss a acute change in the behavior an acute occurrence of abnormal behavior in an acute sickness certainly indicates some complications occurring out of infection as happens in a dengue fever when the fever is getting better suddenly the patient looks confused or even drowsy and that's certainly a complication but many time abnormal behavior may be the only presentation as happens in neurodegenerative disorder like dementia for example and also neurodevelopmental disorder like autism spectrum disorder and he discuss specifically autism spectrum disorder in details and he also mentioned that abnormal behavior may be a manifestation of a mental disorder like a depression for example one feels frustrated one feels hopeless one is not motivated to do anything and depression friends is seen now even in more than 30% of an adult population and it is being seen also in children and children also out of anxiety or stress develop a lot of functional symptoms and then all such neurological and neurocardiac problem are often associated with some other developmental disorder and in the last part of this video dr chokani discussed about how important is to early pick up any developmental delay he made a strong plea that pediatricians do get lot of opportunities to monitor development that every 6 weeks onwards uh, periodically the children are seen by pediatrician for immunization vaccination and these are the opportunities to pick up any early deviation of milestone friends unless we learn to pick up early any deviation in the development we will not be able to kind of rehabilitate such patient well otherwise it becomes too late friends i hope you are enjoying our series of youtube channels and i wish you continue and spread this message to others as well in the next series we are going to discuss largely about the growth and the next video will be presented by dr anjali gokarna and she will talk on poor weight is it physiological or pathological do join us thank you